In the last video, I introduced you to the project. In this video, we're going to set up Express. If you haven't ever set up an Express site, uh, this is going to walk you through some of the things that get included in lots of them. Um, if you have before, then you've probably seen most of this. Maybe glance through what we're going to do and then decide if, if you want to watch it. We're going to be setting up um, GitIgnore, Environment, NPM scripts, Express, static file handling, mustache, and maybe more. So that's the general goal for today. So let's get started. I have my project repository here. Uh, I've, all I have so far are the sketch files that show the screens that I did last time. A readme, which is this, and a gitignore. The gitignore actually already has something in it uh, that I want, which is the node modules. You'll want that for every node project you do. Uh, so we'll come back to this here in a, mona, uh, in a moment. So we don't have a project JSON, so let's go to the terminal and create one. There we go. This is our project JSON. Uh, let's go ahead and start installing some things. So this is going to be an express site, so npm install express. Let's go ahead and get this running. Whenever you start an express site, you have to have a file, or at least one file, to start um, basically set up the server and get it running. So I'm going to call that server.js and set up express in there. This should be enough to actually start the site. And there we go. Now this sets everything up to run on port 5005, but doesn't do a whole lot. So let's go ahead and make some things happen. Uh, let's start with static files. You can set up static file handling by using something that's built in to express itself. This sets up Express to look for static files in a file called public. So let's create that folder. There it is. And so we have a sample file to make sure that this is working. Let's create an HTML file, an HTML file in this folder. And there we go. Start the server again. Let's go to localhost 5005. And hopefully see that. Well, we don't see that. This is probably because if we look in here in our atom, we can see that there's this blue dot. That blue dot means that I made changes to this file, like adding this line but I never saved the file. So, mistake made. Now it's corrected. Let's go back and try this again. There we go. So index.html is a special name for a file that if you have that in your static files there, it will serve that if you go to the root of the web application. So there we go. We have static files set up. Uh, let's take a look at our package JSON and let's look at the scripts. Right now we have this test script which um, really doesn't do anything at this point. 
We'll come back to it perhaps later and add some tests. What I do want to start do right now is to create the start script. And in here, I want to use nodemon. With nodemon, I can start that there. I can then say, come back here and say npm start. And it runs everything under nodemon. Now when I change the server, it will automatically restart itself. And that's pretty handy. So we have a basic npm script set up. We have static file handling set up and express set up. Uh, let's go ahead and set up mustache. We're going to use Mustache as our view engine. This isn't the one I even use the most uh, most often, but it's it's fine. There's a package called Mustache Express, which we can use, which um, makes it really easy to set up Mustache with Express. So we've installed that. Let's go set it up here in our server. Now that we have uh, node mon or npm start setup. I can just go ahead and run that now and then when we're done we can just save the file and go check the site. So I've installed the package so I should bring it in. Now I need to configure the express application to use it. The easiest way to do this is to do something like this app.engine mustache mustache express that works I'm not going to quite do that what I want to do is I want to first put this in a variable like so and this is so I can configure this and I can say mustache dot cache equals null this is very useful for a development environment because that way we can change the mustache files and they don't get cached, which means we don't have to have nodemon restart the server or anything like that. And so that's why I'm doing this here. So step one, complete. Step two, app.set view engine to mustache. With these things set, we can create a folder called views. And this will be the default place that um, they'll look up, Express will look for the mustache views. So if we want to, we can create a runnable route here, and I'm going to call it list. And so this is where later on I will put my book list. And here, I want to render a mustache view just to make sure this works. So this right here is the name of the view file uh, without the extension. This happens to match this, but that is just a coincidence. It doesn't need to match that at all. It can be a completely separate name. In this case, though, it makes it a little easier to understand if they do match. So I'm going to render the list view, which doesn't exist, when someone goes to the list path. So let's create it. List dot mustache. Since we set the site up to use mustache, we will put a, an extension of mustache on the end of this view file. And in here, we can create some HTML and I'll use the snippet right there to get us started. There we go. Let's try it. I'll put the URL here. There it is. And so now we have something at the root and we have something at this path. One of them uses static files and one of them uses mustache to dynamically render the page. Whenever we have data to render for that page, that is going to be more useful. The last thing I want to set up 
is uh, setting up an environment file. So websites often need to set up specific environments for themselves. Uh, I'll need a specific environment for this computer. Whenever in a few videos we deploy this to Heroku, we're going to have to be depending on a different environment. I'm going to create this environment for this one and then later on we'll see how we supply environment values for Heroku. Multiple ways of doing this, I'm going to use a package called .env. So this means I need to install it. We don't actually need to do any special things with the .env package other than this, and so I don't, I'm not going to require .env and put it in a variable. I'm just going to require it and then immediately call the config method uh, on that, and this is going to load up any sort of .env file that we have, and which we don't have at this point, so let's create it. There it is. Let's create a port value. And in my server, I used 5005 just to be different, to show that this is different than what we had in that file. I'm going to change the port to 5006. So what happens is, with this value here, and this right here, this require.env and config, whenever I run the server, it's going to load up that env file and put all values in the process environment variables. Let's go take a look at that. So now when we run the site, and it should have already run it because I just hit save and node mod is running. Uh, when it runs the site, it's going to console log the process environment variables after I've configured my .env file or after I've loaded it. And so here we go. Uh, here's a bunch of things that are loaded in. Every time you run a node app on your computer, it's putting a lot already without you doing anything into this process.env and most of the time you don't need any of this stuff uh, or at the very least you'll only need a little bit of this stuff. In this case what I want to use is I want to use the port and if we look at the very bottom we will see port right here. This is the environment variable that I put in my .env file. You can see that it says 5006. Of course I'm still listening on 5005 so I'm not using it. So now let's use it for our port instead of having that hard-coded 5005. So we can get rid of our console log now that we've seen how that works. We don't need it anymore. We can go down here to the app listen and we can say uh, process.env.port. The nice thing about this is someone else can uh, actually use this same code and run it on a completely different port than I'm running it on. So let's now do some string interpolation here with uh, some of the string literals. Let's bring in process.env.port. Now I've saved it. It's listening on port 5006. If I go back here and I refresh, it's not going to work. I'm now listening at 5006, not 5005. And there we go. The last thing I want to do here is I want to go to my git ignore and add this file. And the reason why is everyone who's using this, um, the spelling there, everyone who's using this will need to have their own environment, can have their own environment settings for database connections, is one another thing we'll use it for later or for ports or whatnot. And so by adding this to the gitignore, I keep my .env file on my computer. 
and then somebody else can create their own env file and run it on theirs with completely different settings. Okay, so we've looked at the git ignore, we've set up the env file, we've created an npm script for start so we can start it with nodemon, we've set up express with both static file handling and mustache. That's what we've done today, basic project setup. There's another piece of uh, basic project setup that I want to go ahead and spend a whole video on with this next video. And that is setting up this project to run uh, SAS, SCSS, to set that up for use within the context of the project. So that's next time.